Episode 10 Prisoner Sunday, July 19th, 2037 One day before Riz was up early with the rest of the ragtag army of broadsiders. They stood in bone suits, weapons ready, filling the main room of the cramped safe house. Word had spread fast. This was the big push, and it was going down, today. But something felt off. The walls were hot with condensation. Jason had the schematics of the pyramid and its security systems blown up in front of the crowd. From the server at the house in Noe Valley, we can disable all the pyramid security, he told the crowd. We can break out all the broadsiders being held in the tombs in the basement of Proto HQ and hit Proto where they live. He waved a hand, motioning to the holding cells in the bowels of the pyramid. You're sure the source is legit? Riz asked. Trace legit, Jason replied. It all came through the radio network. Totally checks out. Riz wasn't convinced. The radio network could easily have been compromised. She was about to say this out loud when Jason turned away. He opened a map, zoomed on a house, and drew an X on it. First, we need to get to the security server, which is in this house. We printed two new vehicles. They're downstairs. Shiv and Taki, take those to the house with your teams. It's lightly guarded, a few marshals, Nothing we can't handle. I guess they didn't want anyone to notice. Jason opened a live security feed of the house, a classic San Francisco painted lady. Its intricate paintwork gleamed in the morning sunshine. There was a temporary checkpoint in the otherwise quiet street, manned by a squad of marshals and a riot wagon. A second squad was posted up on the porch of the townhouse. Jason dropped two little vehicle icons onto the map. They moved along the street as he spoke. Break through the blockade. We'll have a team on the ground to support you. Once you get to the house, use the patches on the marshals outside. Hack them, take control, and keep them out there covering you. You'll need them to fend off any reinforcements. Taki, stay outside with your team and cover Shiv's crew. Shiv, you guys get inside and find the server. Riz watched, unable to shake the doubt she had, but unable to speak up. She'd never been great at saying her piece, especially when it mattered, and especially to Jason, who had intimidated her for years playing broadside. She didn't like letting herself down. She wished she hadn't let Jaden down too. Jason pulled up another map of the downtown area, covered in arrows, glowing in the air. We need all other teams in place around the pyramid when we take the security systems out. I'll coordinate that from here. Shiv and Taki's teams will lead the charge on the house in Noe Valley. The rest of you, get downtown. He turned and grinned at the crowd. This is it. Let's roll. Shiv bellowed, turning to the group. A cheer went up, and the broadsiders started to move out. Riz hung back. She had to say something. She slunk over to Jason as the others filed past him. Are you sure about this? Riz said, scratching the back of her head. Something feels off to me. This British guy just, he just told you all this stuff? Jason patted Riz on her shoulder. Yeah, it's good. Donata, there's nothing to worry about. I just think we should double check. Riz trailed off as Jason squeezed her shoulder. Chill, Habibi, said Jason. We did. I told you it's good. Remember what we talked about? Following orders? Just get out there and kick some ass, okay? Jason walked out smiling, leaving Riz thoroughly unconvinced. Shiv screamed down the 101 in a freshly printed open-top SUV with Taki and his team close behind in a second vehicle. Riz sat next to Shiv in the passenger seat, agitated. A third soldier in a pink broadside ski mask sat in the back, hand hanging off the roll bar next to what looked like a large toolbox. D-tag hoodies covered the team's heads, their armor hidden underneath. Skull helmets and weapons lay out of sight at their feet. Another team is in position to help you through the checkpoint, Jason said over the radio. Riz zoomed in on the street ahead. At the mouth of the street, a line of red and white robots spread across the asphalt. A big sign floated above them, that red road closed. Shift turned off the freeway. Taki followed. The SUV sped up, hurtling towards the blockade. Jane and Jaden had started early too. Jane was still in sweats. Jaden was wearing the new stealth bone suit. They sat in Jane's office, drinking coffee and sifting through protodata. In an instant, the internet screen turned red, shutting them out. Jaden looked worried. 
Jane swiped her security token again. Nothing. She tossed it on the desk with a sigh and checked the downloads folder. They shut us out. But I managed to pull most of the stuff before. They shut us out? Jaden interjected, standing up. If we just got shut out of the network, someone knows we were there. But we used Shroud. Jane narrowed her eyes. They don't know it was us. We also used your security token with a unique hash. Jaden replied, feeling their chest tighten. Are you sure they couldn't trace that hash to you? Jane looked uneasy. She shook her head, turned, and opened the downloads folder. But they haven't. We'd have seen it. If they logged any kind of security breach, there would have been an alert, a bunch of lockout notifications. It's protocol. Jane scanned through the files she had been able to download. Jaden looked at the files too. I don't think your man Rook follows a lot of protocols. Jaden noticed the file name. Info for radio. Wait. They said. What do you guys use radio for? Jane looked mystified. Radio? We don't use radio. Nobody uses radio. We do, replied Jaden, clicking on the file. They opened the safe house map Rook had sent to Jason. They zoomed in on the house Rook had highlighted. Is that? Jaden began, seeds of panic sprouting. Jane nodded, looking pale. My house. Jaden went white. They opened the other files, taking them in. Is there a proto-server here? No, said Jane. I don't understand. Jaden jumped up, put their helmet on, and sidled up to the window. Outside, two marshals stood sentry in front of the house. Two sharp shots lay on the roof opposite. Jaden ducked under the window frame, moving to the other side, to get an angle on the rest of the street. They saw more marshals and sharp shots lying in wait, behind cars and filament recycle cans across the road. They noticed a shimmering patch of air on another rooftop a few blocks over. They zoomed in. Stealths. The sun bounced off a car windshield, catching Jaden's eye. Two vehicles full of hooded figures were heading towards a security blockade at the end of the street. They're everywhere, Jaden said to Jane. We're leaving. Now. Jane jumped up and peered out of the window too. She turned to Jaden. You go. I'll stay and buy you some time. They won't hurt me, but if they catch you, they'll kill you. Jaden shook their head in protest. Go. Jane said firmly. Trust me. Jaden took a beat, nodded, turned, and ran. Koth, Michelle, and Ark piled out of the back of the van downtown in bone suits, helmets, and D-tag hoodies, carrying gym bags. Michelle closed the doors, nodding to the other broadsiders still inside the vehicle. The van pulled away, its glass tinted to hide its occupants. They hid in the shadows of a side entrance to the building site where Michelle worked. Koth looked up at the silhouette of the half-finished tower, cranes hanging from its summit. The proto-pyramid, one block over, glowed behind it. He looked out at the street, his hand closing around the EMP blaster in his pocket. Three dark shapes with glowing blue eyes were approaching from the other end of the block. The shapes stepped out of the shadows, their red and white armor plating catching the light. Let's move, Koth whispered. Michelle swiped her security token and the sight door clicked open. Art and Michelle crept inside while Koth kept his eyes on the marshal patrol. Keeping a hand on his gun, he stepped through the door, closing it behind them. Shiv's SUV bore down on the blockade. Inside, the broadsiders were ready, helmets on, and weapons cocked. Taki's crew followed in the second vehicle, just behind. Got the Alameda aliens flanking you. They'll hit them from the sides to make sure you get through. Jason informed them over the radio. The Alameda aliens. They suck. Said Shiv, handing the wheel to Riz and climbing in back, opening the large toolbox. Hope they shoot marshals better than they play broadside. Riz added. Shiv hoisted an EMP Gatling gun out of the toolbox, snapping it onto the SUV's roll bar with a clang. Riz accelerated. Ahead, at the blockade, the marshal's ears twitched as the vehicles whistled towards them. They leveled their guns like a firing squad. Ready. Aim. Instructed the squad leader. <laughs> EMP pulses rained down, carving the squadron into wet green chunks. The dying robots turned to see five broadsiders stood on a rooftop, all wearing helmets shaped like alien heads, filleting the marshals with EMP fire. More pulses hit them from Shiv's Gatling gun. 
The SUV smashed through the line, rolling over the broken gooey bodies like speed bumps. Shiv, impressed, crossed their arms above their head, making the bones up sign to the aliens. Rook watched the SUV's progress from the hexacopter. Everyone in position? He asked. In position, sir. Came the response from a marshal on the ground. Rook noticed a small movement outside Jane's house. Zoom on that. The camera magnified Jane, walking out of her front door, onto the porch, with hands raised in surrender. As he watched, he noticed something else. A shadow, at the back of the house, creeping across the balcony. It moved like a tiger, jumping down into the backyard. He zoomed in. The pixels grew into an anodized, black skeleton, with cat-like ears. He recognized him instantly. Warhead. Rook shouted in surprise. He's with Stratton? Get a team on him now. Take him out. The heat ray hit Jaden straight in the temple, taking them down. They rolled instinctively, the way broadsiders were trained to. Even though the military-grade helmet absorbed most of the blast, the pain was blinding. Jaden dipped into cover, clutching their burning skull, avoiding the second and third blasts the sharp shot fired. Somehow, Jaden managed to scramble to their feet, trying to think through the wall of heat filling their brain. Jaden ran as their vision returned. More blasts rang out as they headed down the path around the side of the house, past the utility room and the recycle cans, out towards the street. Jaden had no weapon and no plan. All they knew was, there were at least three different types of robots trying to kill them, and it was time to leave. Jaden veered to the right, heading up the street. They saw Jane to their left, arms raised, as two SUVs full of hooded figures pulled up. Were those broadsiders? Another blast just missed Jaden. They turned to see the blurry outlines of two stealths across the street, running straight for Jaden. It wasn't clear what was going on, but it didn't make sense to wait around and find out. Jaden sprinted away from Jane's house, running faster than they knew they could. The SUV scraped to a stop at the house. The broadsiders took their hoods down, revealing their menacing, multicolored skull helmets. Shiv sprayed the Marshall Squadron on the front porch with the Gatling gun, offlining most of them and sending the rest diving for cover. The broadsiders jumped out, EMP guns blazing. Jane ducked in the corner of the porch, avoiding the blasts. The broadsiders inched up the front stairs, towards the house, under the cover of the EMP Gatling gun. Above them, on the rooftops, more sharp shots and stealths lay in wait, silently surrounding the house. Riz turned to see the black shadow tearing down the street, away from the house. It wasn't a bone suit she recognized. This was new. She could see the familiar skeleton crew logo etched on its back. Jaden? She said to herself in disbelief. Riz didn't understand. But now she knew for sure something was very wrong with this plan. She broke away from the pack and started after the shadow. Jason came through the radio. Riz, get back to the others now, or- Jason, something is wrong. Riz replied firmly. What I tell you about disobeying orders? Riz had had enough. Sue me, Habibi. She said. She muted Jason and kept running. Shiv and Taki didn't notice Riz peel off as they strafed up the stairs towards the house. Shiv brandished an EMP shotgun. Taki had an EMP sniper rifle slung across his back. A marshal lunged at Taki from behind a chair on the porch. Taki slipped the punch, grabbed its arm, and twisted it behind its back. Shiv stepped forward and spiked a patch into the marshal's comms port. The robot stumbled, then froze. Its blue eyes slowly turned yellow. It worked, Taki exclaimed, punching the air. The Alameda aliens caught up on foot from the blockade. Taki motioned to them, and the aliens took up positions guarding the house. Shiv looked at Jane, still cowering in the corner of the porch, looking confused. I seen her on the news, right? Shiv said to Taki. Taki opened his visor and looked at Jane. Yeah, works for Prota, or just got fired. I don't remember which. He replied, rifle trained on the house. Hey yo, you better take a walk, honey. Shiv said to Jane, motioning for her to leave. Wait said Jane, getting up. It's a trap. Shiv kissed their teeth. Bitch, please. We're the trap. Shiv retorted. Hey, someone watch this lady. I don't trust her. Two aliens marched over to Jane, weapons on her. Jane raised her hands again, sighing. Please, listen to me. 
she shouted. I know who Warhead is. Shiv and Taki looked at her, then at each other, and laughed. Sure, lady. Shiv said sarcastically. You know, many people think they know. Shiv responded. You don't know, squat. It was only then, Jane realized she had never asked Warhead their real name. She attempted to boot up Lumen OS, but the broadsiders were jamming the perimeter from the jeep. She tried remembering the name used on their flexwork account, but it was too late. Taki and Shiv were moving out of earshot, towards the house, with their weapons raised. Shiv booted into the open front door, spraying the entryway. Two marshals that had taken cover inside, dived. Taki ran in, stabbing patches into their backs. They lurched and bucked, before relaxing, like their strings had been cut. They stopped fighting, and stood upright as their eyes turned yellow. Where the code's at? Said Shiv, looking around. From the safe house, Jason watched Taki, Shiv, and the other broadsiders' POV cams. Downstairs! Jason said to Shiv. Is Riz with you? He watched Shiv and Taki head downstairs on the screens. The hack marshal stood upright, eyes glowing yellow, completely still. Negative. Said Shiv, edging down the stairs, shotgun raised. Jason hit a button on the 92.7 FM radio app. All teams, stand by. The words rippled out across the city. Michelle, Art, and Koth heard them, as did the other teams of broadsiders posted close to the pyramid. They sculpted in doorways, car parks, stairwells, and coffee shops. They wore armor under hoods, weapons hidden at the ready. We're almost at the server room, said Jason's voice over the popping of the static. As soon as they're in, we strike. Jaden's boots pounded the pavement. The two stealths marauded after them, firing. A blast hit a jogger running the other way, sending her to the ground. Pedestrians dived, cowering behind cars in disbelief as a metal skeleton, chased by two ghosts, thundered past. Jaden jumped onto a low wall and over a fence. They plunged through backyards, the new armor making easy work of the fences in their way. Some they vaulted, some they ran straight through. The stealth sliced after them, blasting. Jaden landed in a yard to see a trampoline close to a house. They ran at it, bouncing upwards onto a low roof. They clambered up to the main rooftop and leapt from there to the next. They sped up, making it from rooftop to rooftop with ease. The new armor made them almost superhuman, boosting their jumps and absorbing the impact as solar roof tiles cracked and fractured underfoot. The stealths were now on the rooftops too. One of them was gaining fast. Jaden leapt onto a large flat-roofed house. The robot was right behind them. The electronic whir of its joints got louder. Jaden ran towards the edge of the flat roof. It was too far to jump to the next house. Jaden sped up anyway. The robot sped up too, about to grab them when Jaden stopped dead, curled into a ball. The stealth tried to stop, skidding. But it was too late. It tripped over Jaden and over the edge, straight into the blades of a maglev wind turbine spinning on a lower rooftop like a giant horizontal fan. The turbine sliced the stealth apart like a doll in a blender. It brayed and thrashed as it died, green slime spattering the walls around it. Jaden looked back. The second stealth was behind them and gaining fast. Jaden dropped from the flat rooftop into the backyard of the house and ran on. Shiv and Taki emerged from the lower floor of Jane's house, empty-handed. Are you sure? Jason's voice said. There's nothing down here, man. I'm telling you. Replied Shiv. Try upstairs. Shiv and Taki made their way up the stairs, turning to look at the two marshals with the glowing yellow eyes as they passed. Jaden tore through the yards and over the rooftops of Noe Valley, heading in the direction of the highest hills and the Sutro Tower, standing tall up on Twin Peaks. Jaden skidded to a stop. The roof of the next house was far below, at the bottom of a steep hill. In the sky above, Jaden saw two red and white dog jets circling coming into a landing close to Jane's house. Jaden looked down. It was a long drop. Behind them, the second stealth was catching up. It started blasting again. <laughs> Jaden ducked, hearing Carlos' voice in their head. Are you scared of heights, or are you a broadsider? Because you can't be both. Jaden took a deep breath, clenched their fists, took a running jump, and dived headfirst at the roof far below. The stealth dived after them. Jaden sailed over a tree, the wind getting louder, the house below getting closer, curled into a ball, and... 
Jaden smashed through the roof of the house, landing on the second floor, in a hallway. Plaster and roof tiles rained down on them as their airbags deflated. Jaden pulled himself up, using the banisters in the hallway as support, and looked around, clutching their knee in pain. From the sound of things, no one was home. They headed for the stairs, limping as they went. The stealth leapt out from a bedroom doorway, covered in plaster too. It lashed out, grabbing Jaden across the chest, dragging them into a bedroom. It was a typical spare bedroom, slash office. A 3D1 by the desk, double bed floating two feet off the floor, and a huge hole in the ceiling where the stealth had crash-landed. The robot threw Jaden to the floor, locking them into a fierce ground game. Jaden grappled with the shadow, trying to get on top of it, raining blows down into its face, but this was not a marshal. Its armor was as tough as theirs, and with no weapon, Jaden had little chance. The robot straddled Jaden and raised a heavy metal fist. Jaden dodged the blow as the fist slammed down, countering with a body shot, puncturing a small hole between the robot's ribs. The stealth flinched, giving Jaden a split-second opening to push the robot off. Jaden staggered to their feet. The stealth sprung, charging Jaden, slamming them into the desk. The robot towered over Jaden, shimmering in and out of visibility. Its four blue eyes pulsed as it started to tighten its grip around Jaden's neck. Jaden struggled for air, panicking. The robot's grip tightened. A shot of blue lightning ripped through the stealth's body. The robot let go of Jaden as green sludge burst from its torso. Riz stood in the doorway, EMP shotgun smoking. Jaden leapt up, grabbed the stealth into a headlock, opening their visor, gasping air back into their lungs as green liquid drained from the robot's chest cavity. Jaden felt a bolt of rage course through them as they rammed the stealth face first into the chamber at the top of the 3D1 and hit the recycle button. The printer word into action. The robot made a strange wailing sound as the 3D1 grated and melted its head back into filings and filament. Slime and sparks flew. Its arms flailed. Jaden pushed the robot face down with all they had, using the printer like a garbage disposal. The shadow brayed and writhed. Slime splashed Jaden's face until finally the robot stopped struggling. Jaden dropped the robot's headless carcass and turned to Riz. She looked back at Jaden through her open visor, still catching her breath. She looked nervous. Jaden felt it too. They hadn't been alone since what happened in the bedroom at the safe house. But Jaden had never been happier to see her. Jaden took off their helmet. You came back for me? Jaden asked. Riz nodded. Jaden realized they had green liquid on their face. They self-consciously started to wipe it off. Riz stepped forward and lightly brushed the rest from Jaden's cheek. I should have listened to you. Riz said. I'm sorry. Her eyes softened. This felt good. That she had faith in Jaden in the end. I'm sorry too. I shouldn't have run out on you. Jaden held out their hand. Friends? Riz thought on this a beat, like that wasn't exactly what she wanted. But she smiled and took Jaden's hand. They looked at each other as their hands lingered together. Jaden wanted to be more than friends desperately. But this didn't feel like the time or the place. Inside, Jaden felt something shift. Riz had been there for them. She had believed in Jaden. So had Jane. If they could, maybe the others would too. Maybe Jaden could lead the way Zero had wanted. Maybe they could still win this. Jaden looked past Riz, out of the window, towards Jane's house, suddenly remembering where they were. What the hell is going on out there? Jaden and Riz put their helmets back on as they bounced downstairs. Shiv and the others are at the house where the server is. The plan was to either hack or offline the marshals out front. The patches work, by the way. Here, take some. Riz said, handing Jaden a few as they reached the foot of the stairs. Jaden nodded and stuffed the patches in their pockets, stopping, trying to piece it all together. There's no server at that house, Riz. That's Jane Stratton's house. The woman from Prota, remember? Jane is on our side. Riz looked horrified. Why would they? We got a tip off over the radio. Some British guy told Jason the codes were there. I knew something was up. Everyone else is downtown waiting to attack the pyramid. Jaden stopped in their tracks, putting it all together. The British guy is Rook, the head of security at Prota. He killed Carlos. Prota used Jane's house to trap us and set her up. If they know about the radio network, they know about everything we're doing. 
We need to get all the teams out. Now. Jaden opened the radio app as they ran for the front door. Shiv and Taki came back down the stairs at Jane's, looking frustrated. This whole place is empty, man, I swear. Shiv said. That's impossible, insisted Jason. As they spoke, one of the marshals they had hacked with a patch turned, watching them with yellow eyes. Rook watched too, from the hexacopter, the marshal's camera feed streaming onto his screen. Next to it, on another display, he had another feed open. A sharp shot was spying on Jason at the safe house in South City. At the safe house, panic spread across Jason's face. Then that means... Riz's voice came over the radio, cutting him off. Guys, get out now. It's a setup. I repeat, get everyone out. Rook nodded to his people as they listened in from the hexacopter. Now. The sharp shot in South City fired first. A heat blast shattered the window at the safe house. A second hit Jason between the eyes. His head bounced off the radio console, knocking him unconscious as he fell to the floor. At Jane's house, the hack marshal sprang to life. One of the robots shot Taki point blank in the face, hammering him into the floor. Shiv ran, kicking open the front door to see marshals and stealths destroying the Alameda aliens posted outside. A bolt of fire hit Shiv square in the chest from a sharp shot on the roof opposite. They collapsed in the doorway as heat smashed into them from all sides. Jaden and Riz sprinted back to Jane's as fast as they could. They had the radio app open, but Jason and the others weren't responding. All they could hear was the echoes of gunfire and fighting. Stay off this channel! Jaden barked into the radio app. It's not safe to talk here anymore. Jane's house came into view on the street at the bottom of the hill. Jaden and Riz stopped, looking down at the scene. A platoon of robots had the house surrounded. The stealths shot the last few aliens unceremoniously. Marshals loaded the unconscious broadsiders into a riot wagon. A dog jet idled in the street. Jane was nowhere to be seen. The radio waves were silent. The broadsiders' SUVs and several other parked cars were smashed and dented. Windows broken. Onlookers were being held back and the block cordoned off with glowing digital do not cross lines by yet more marshals. Debris and dead robots were scattered across the street. A British voice crackled over the radio. This is a message for Warhead. This is your only chance to save your mates. If you're not out front of Stratton's house in five, I promise you, you'll never see any of your little runt friends again. The air went dead. Riz turned off the radio and looked at Jaden, who was deep in thought. I have to go. Jaden finally said. Riz grabbed their arm. Are you crazy? Why would? We can't let them kill anyone else, Riz. Jaden said. We need to get everybody back from the pyramid. It's not safe to attack. All of their security systems are still online. Jaden put their hand on Riz's arm and gave her a squeeze. Trust me. I'm not going it alone this time. I'm buying us some time so you can get everyone out. We're doing this together. You and me and all of us. I'll find you again. I promise. We'll regroup. Wait for me. They looked at each other through their visors. All right. I believe in you, Jaden. I always did. Jaden looked at her a second longer, eyes smiling through their visor. Jaden gripped her hand one last time before letting go. Go. Riz nodded, snapped her visor down, and started to run in the other direction. Jaden turned to the robots standing in the street below. They took a breath and started walking towards them. Hey! Jaden shouted. Over here! The robots circled Jaden like they had a wild animal cornered. Jaden's footwork matched theirs. They crouched in a combat stance, turning their head and eyeing each of them, fists clenched. A torso materialized in front of Jaden, shimmering in the air. They stopped. The robots did too, guns trained on Jaden. Sam Kor was looking straight at Jaden from his boardroom, grinning. He didn't look like the glowing healthy guy Jaden always saw in the media. He looked like a junkie. Was he wearing a bone suit? Jaden glared at him through their closed visor. Mr. Warhead, said Sam with a little bow. It's an honor. Jaden stared back. Look, said Sam. This is pointless. All this fighting. For what? I don't even know who you are or what you want. What I do know is, you're talented. Jaden blinked back at him. I want to make a deal. Help me make this right. 
Sam said it like it was the best news in the world. Come quietly. You won't be punished. In fact, I could use you. Your whole team would be a huge value add to Prota. White Hat Hackers. A special innovation team. You'll learn well. Be heroes. We'll put a good spin on this whole fiasco. Sounds okay, right? Better than being a martyr, no? Sam said this with a timid laugh, like this wasn't really a threat. Jaden was frozen. Brain ticking. Sam still had no idea who Jaden was. What Jaden wanted, more than anything, was to take Prota down. And here was CEO Sam Kaur inviting them into the nerve center the Spiderhead Zero had spent his life trying to crush. Look, here's what I'm thinking. Sam said calmly. The team here will hand you off to Rook. Jaden bristled at the mention of his name. You'll have a security debrief with his team, and then let's you and I talk here over some sushi. Or steak. A grain bowl, whatever you want. Doesn't matter, but that's it. There will be no charges brought against you. I swear. You can come in now and have an easy life. Jaden stared back at him with dead eyes, giving away nothing. Or you can keep running. Sam added. And inevitably, at some point. He sighed, wringing his hands like there was nothing he could do. Okay. Jaden said in a deep voice. I'll come in. Sam cracked a thin smile and nodded. I'll see you shortly. Two marshals walked Jane into the proto boardroom, throwing her into a chair. Sam looked over at her from the windows where he was standing, finishing a video call. Jane looked up at Sam, hands zip-tied behind her back. She hardly recognized him. He was wearing an armor suit like Rook's. He smiled at her, but he looked groggy. He was swaying slightly. Skin pale. Sweat was beating on his brow. Was he drunk? Behind Sam was a man's silhouette on a screen. Jane had seen this man before, but never spoken to him directly. His name was Nov DeVette, chairman of Proto's board and founder of Advanced Basics, their parent company. Short silvery hair glowed around the dark outline of his head. The screen he was on disappeared. Sam turned and grinned at her. You know, when we saw you hacking the internet, we thought, let's send all the terrorists to Jane's house, round everyone up all at once, put a nice bow on the story. Turns out, you really were helping them. Sam laughed unconvincingly, clearly upset, opening the footage of Jaden running out from Jane's house. Jane didn't dispute this. Sam looked disappointed, but calm. I am hurt, Jane. Really? I thought we were friends. We did so much good work together. This is a real bummer, but it's done. Jane looked up at him. Sam, trust me. I know you think you have this, but if you don't listen to me now, you're done. I promise you that. These kids, this community, what they are doing, the way they are doing it. I don't think you or anyone else is ever going to stop them. Sam laughed at the thought, sitting down on the floor next to her, crossing his legs and flipping his hair back. You can start by telling me all about this Warhead character. Riz crouched under a tree, a safe distance away, still able to see everything. She watched as four marshals escorted Jaden into the dog jet. She opened the radio app once more. If you can hear me, this network has been compromised. Get off this channel. To all the teams downtown. The words came over the radio on the building site where Koth, Michelle, and Art were stationed, close to the top of the tower. Koth had a sharp shot on the pyramid opposite in his sights. You need to get out of there now. As fast as you can. I repeat, get out now. Retreat, and we will regroup. It's over. The three warriors looked at each other as the radio went dead. Wind whistled through the bones of the building. The huge crane next to them creaked, swaying in the breeze. Art looked at the ground, far below. He could see lights flashing. A riot wagon had driven onto the site. Its red and white passengers were climbing out, scanning the area. A block over in the proto boardroom, Sam had the radio on, now too. Jane was still sat in the chair opposite, the two marshals guarding the doors. Ah, yes. The team's downtown. Sam muttered. He swiveled in his chair. He looked out at the city, making calculations. Despite everything he had accomplished today, it wasn't finished. There was still more. Why was there always more? He opened a video screen. 
an engineer in proto overalls, looked up at Sam as the camera feed opened. I want you to shut off the power. Announce a citywide blackout until all those conspiring against us are brought to heel. He said. This ends tonight. The engineer thought on this a beat and nodded. Jane stood up. The marshals behind her stood ready. Her arms were still zip-tied behind her. The power? Sam, you can't. She caught her breath, composing herself. She was done begging Sam, but she had to say something. Sam. Jane said calmly. You must listen to me. Innocent people will die if you cut the power. There must be another. I don't want this, Jane. Sam said indignantly. But I have to protect this city from- No. Jane was done. She saw Red and lunged forward at him, getting in his face. Before she could take another step, a marshal whipped forward from its post and grabbed her, holding her back. You're sick. The choices you're making are killing people. Jane roared. The only thing the city needs protection from is you, Sam. What gives you the right to play God? Sam looked genuinely shocked by the outburst. He paused, considering her question for a second before answering. I'm not playing. Night was falling, but it was impossible to tell in the windowless bowels of Proto HQ. A marshal faced an imposing control screen. Its display read, Energy grid, power level. The robot slid a fader to the zero position. Streetlights, buildings, and billboards started to snuff out around the pyramid. The darkness radiated out from there, across San Francisco, all the way out to the giant anthills of South City. Jaden sat cuffed in the back of the dog jet as it ascended into the sky. They'd been stuffed in there, no search, no Miranda rights, nothing, still in their armor and helmet. A marshal sat next to Jaden and two more opposite. Jaden looked out at the city, blacking out, block after block, as the craft bumped through turbulence. Jaden's hands were in their lap. They felt something in their pocket, something flat and solid. The patches. Jaden looked at the marshals opposite through their visor. They moved their hand. Slowly. Their fingers crept into their pocket, eyes locked on the marshals. Jaden made out like they were scratching their leg, slipping a patch out of their pocket and into their palm. They gripped it. Am I really about to do this? They waited. No. Jaden's heart was thumping. It's the only play left. They waited. But it's suicide if. Jaden wrestled with the idea. I have to. No. They took a breath. <laughs> Jaden's cuffed arms whipped round into the face of the robot next to them. Jaden caved the patch into its face. The robot's head hit the back wall with a clang. The black patch jammed into its eye socket. The robot began shaking. Having a seizure. Jaden jumped up, throwing themselves into the two marshals opposite as they stood to restrain them. Jaden punched a second patch into the second marshal's eye. The third marshal grabbed Jaden, slamming them into the metal floor of the dog jet. The robot's heat gun charged. Jaden flinched, ready for the burn, as the patched marshals grabbed the unpatched one in a headlock and prized it away from Jaden. Jaden lay on the ground, controlling the patched marshals via Lumen OS, connected to the patches via Wi-Fi. Jaden was moving the marshals with their mind, forcing the two pirate robots to overpower the third. Jaden jumped up, spun, and stabbed a patch into the last marshal's eye socket. In the front of the dog jet, the marshal piloting the craft heard the commotion. It opened a small hatch into the back. Everything okay back there? It asked, without turning. There was no reply. The pilot turned to look through the hatch. A robot arm burst out, slapping a patch into its face. Rook watched as the dog jet approached the hexacopter. He stood tall in his armor, visor up, waiting to meet the kid who'd given him so much trouble these last few days. He was looking forward to this. Sam had told him to get it over with quickly, but Rook was going to do it slowly. A legion of stealths stood in formation in front of him. The dog jet got closer. It wasn't slowing down. Rook frowned. It was too close. Too fast. His eyes widened. He dived for cover. The dog jet butted through the glass, demolishing the line of stealths. It wrapped itself around a pillar, housing one of the hexacopter's eight massive rotor blades. Rook sat up, dazed, surrounded by debris, fire, and dead shadows. The dog jet's doors swished open. 
four marshals, wearing eye patches, climbed out, moving in a tight formation, firing at the surviving stealths. Behind them, he saw the silhouette of Warhead. The familiar skull looked at him, horns jetting toward the sky, fangs glinting, wearing new armor. Warhead shimmered in and out of visibility. Is that my armor? Warhead walked towards him. The pirates and stealths tore into each other. Behind them, one of the hexacopter's rotors wobbled in its housing, loosened by the impact of the dog jet. Rook stood to face his nemesis. This kid who'd blast him, burned him, humiliated him, thrown an EMP grenade in his face. He lowered his visor and moved forward from his corner, adrenaline pumping, ready to fight. Come on then, boy. Let's have it. Let's have it. He screamed. Rook windmilled in, like a soccer hooligan, arms whirling. Jaden charged, aiming true. They landed the first punch. Rook ate it like a snack. He clumped them back harder. Jaden winced. Rook grabbed Jaden, pulling them into a headlock, overpowering them. Jaden wrestled an arm free and jabbed out a spiked elbow, catching Rook's throat. He stumbled back, spluttering, winded, coughing up blood. Jaden seized the moment and lunged, banging a combination into Rook's face. He took a few, before sidestepping and parrying. They grappled, but even in the new armor, Jaden's strength was no match for Rook. He picked Jaden up and slammed them into the deck with awesome force. The pain was transcendental. Jaden felt like they were leaving their body as the wind escaped their lungs. Rook pushed Jaden's wheezing body into the floor with one hand, pounding their head with his other fist. Each blow slammed into Jaden's helmet with a crunch, rocking them. Jaden tried to block. It was no use. Rook kept pounding. His fists were like Rottweilers. Jaden's body went limp. It was hard to tell the blows apart. It was one feeling now. Rook lifted them and pinned them to a wall. In the background, the rotor column rattled and hummed louder. Getting looser. Jaden breathed air into their lungs, trying to recover. Rook leaned in and opened his visor. I told you I'd be the one to do ya, didn't I? I promised. Jaden opened their visor too. They suddenly felt life energy surge back through them. Rook's jaw dropped. Jaden knew he wasn't expecting this. For Warhead to reveal their identity, to show Rook who they really were. Jaden knew it would be a surprise. Just for a second. Just long enough for. <laughs> Jaden headbutted Rook. The corner of their helmet caught the bridge of his nose. He reeled back as it broke, dropping Jaden, his whole face stinging. He howled, and then he laughed. He touched his nose, looking down at his bloodied glove, and then back at Jaden, blood smeared across his face. He snapped his visor back down. Jaden did the same. He ran at them, roaring. Jaden reached out to their left and grabbed a fire extinguisher from the wall. Rook flew into Jaden as they brought it around, bashing it upside his head. It stunned him, and he stumbled. Jaden lunged forward and hit him with the fire extinguisher again. And again. And again. Rook staggered back. And again. His visor cracked. The rotor column behind them came completely loose. It ground and tore at its housing. Sparks started to fly. Rook turned at the sound. Jaden took a step backwards. The housing exploded. The rotor stem snapped clean in two. Outside, the broken rotor creaked, collapsing inwards towards the ship. The rotor's massive blades were still spinning at top speed. Jaden and Rook watched as the blades cut through the roof. Rook was stood in their path. No time to move. The reinforced steel roof of the hexacopter crumpled like paper as the blades chopped into it. The blades caught Rook's armor, flinging him out into space. They slashed completely through the hull of the ship, cutting the hexacopter in two. Jaden looked up at Rook as he screamed, hurled upwards into the night, a death crack, stretching head to crotch across his bone suit. The hexacopter tipped like a boat in a storm. Jaden slipped and rolled out of the broken hull, falling towards Earth. Above them, the hexacopter's battery cells caught a spark, and the ship erupted. <laughs> Comets of metal rained down. Jaden plummeted towards Earth, spinning as the debris shower chased them towards the ground. A warning message flashed in their head-up display. Warning. Airbags only effective at 1,000 feet max. Current altitude, 
5,763 feet. Jaden tumbled through the air, terrified. They couldn't even scream. Then they heard their brother's voice again. Jaden was a broxider. The fear turned to courage. Jaden breathed deeper, stretched out their arms, and the tumble turned to a wobble. They remembered what they were wearing. Jaden righted themselves into an uneasy skydive. Petrified, but in control, and... Jaden stretched out their hands as the short wings deployed from their stealth armor, and suddenly, they were flying. The wind whistling up from the city below was deafening. Jaden looked down. Lights continued to flicker out, block by block. Proto had cut the city's power. Jaden was crushed. Zero was wrong. Proto still controlled the city grid, which meant it was over. It also occurred to Jaden, as they flew towards the Hayes Valley skyscraper farm, that they didn't really know how to fly in a bone suit. The skyscraper farm got closer. Jaden tried to slow up and glide towards it, but it was getting larger, fast. Way too fast. Jaden braced himself, curled in a ball, and... Jaden corkscrewed through the glass into a field of crops on the top floor. Their airbags opened as their bodies smashed through the soil and crops, heading straight for an unmanned combine harvester. There was no stopping. Outside, the city was almost pitch black. The farm's lights snuffed out. The harvester's power died with them, and its blade slowed. Jaden plowed to a stop between the harvester's teeth. The blades jammed into Jaden's helmet, biting the glass. The last thing Jaden saw was their visors shattering as the blades bit into their face.